It's Tuesday again, Taco Tuesday, and this week I'm going to do carnitas. Um, I'm going to challenge myself to do Taco Tuesday all the way, so I'm going to do salsa roja, a salsa verde, a pinto beans, Mexican rice, and eight and a half pounds of carnitas. I can only do this because I have two pressure cookers. You can do it too if you want to take the long way. If, um, if you're going to do all of that, you may want to do your salsas. Uh, on Monday and then do your beans and your meat and your rice on Tuesday. Um, so I'm going to start with the green salsa and the red salsa and I'm going to get those going in my pressure cooker at the same time. My baby needs a bath and so while those are cooking I'm going to give her a bath and then I'll come back and take the uh, stewed tomatoes and uh, tomatillos out and uh, get my meat and my beans started. So I'll show you really quickly what I have. I did take pictures and I posted them for each dish, what you'll need for ingredients. It's two o'clock on Tuesday and we'll see if I can get this done. If not, I'll go as far as I can and then I'll make up the difference with package stuff. So I'm gonna just show you quick what's on my counter. Nothing is as organized as it was in the pictures because I moved my ingredients around, but here you go. So I have tomatillos, serranos, lime, white onion, and cilantro and this is for my green salsa or salsa verde I have uh, Roma tomatoes and some better bush tomatoes that I just pulled off of my plant that was the last of my tomatoes a jalapeno a red onion a white onion somewhere in this pile I have a lime and I'm gonna need a lime for the red salsa and then for the most part, whenever I'm doing Mexican food, I always have out salt, pepper, ground garlic, cumin, and uh, cayenne and chili powder. So you wanna pull all of those spices out because we're gonna use them for all of these dishes. If you wanna get ahead of yourself and get ready and you really wanna do the beans and the rice and the meat, you can follow along with me. For the rice, you're going to need rice, chicken stock, sea salt, cumin, garlic powder, and tomato sauce. For the pinto beans, you're going to need sea salt, black pepper, cayenne pepper, chili powder, tomatoes, jalapenos, red onions, and chicken stock. I also forgot to mention that you're going to need chicken stock for both your red and green salsa. I know that sounds weird, but I promise you're going to need it. And then for the carnitas, I am using uh, this, they cut this up really nicely, it's just a boneless pork shoulder and I'm doing just about eight and a half pounds between these three packages and I can do that all in the pressure cooker in about an hour and a half. So by the time this uh, night is over, if I've succeeded, I've gotten all of this done and some fresh homemade corn tortillas and I'll pull that stuff out later. So I'm gonna, going to get this salsa started and I'll be back. Okay, red salsa time and then my girl needs a bath. So I'm gonna put the, I've already washed my Roma tomatoes. I cut an onion just into big chunky pieces and I've washed all my uh, produce. And so in my first pressure cooker, I have three cups of chicken stock. And then what I'm gonna do is take my vegetables which are washed and ready to go. I just made sure all the stems are off. I cut my tomato up, a jalapeno, and all of my Roma tomatoes. And I'm just gonna drop all of them. That's my chicken stock base and that will dissolve the yellow that you see in the bottom. So I'm gonna put all of that in there. I'm also gonna add about a tablespoon of salt. And then I'm gonna sprinkle in about a teaspoon of chili powder, a half, I'm sorry, a half teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of garlic, and a half teaspoon of cumin. This is the teaspoon of garlic. And then we're going to close the lid and set the pressure cooker on this for 10 minutes. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take all of these spices and it's gonna stew my tomatoes and my onions and my jalapeno together. And then once that comes out, we are going to uh, go to the next step where we add uh, some more onion and cilantro and finish it off. So I'm going to set my pressure cooker for 10 minutes, close the lid, and I'll be back to finish the red salsa. current situation. She's down to her last three bites. So we're going to try and do the green. I have it ready to go. I washed all those tomatillos. This is one white onion just quartered and then also one serrano. 
I'm going to take this and put it in my second pressure cooker. And it's going to go in there. I just broke my salt. That's awesome. Fuck. Okay, so that's going to go in there with three cups of chicken stock, a teaspoon of garlic powder. I just dumped my salt on the floor. That's what I just broke. So a tablespoon of salt once I can fix my problem. And a half teaspoon of cumin. So I'm going to put the lid on this, I'm going to close it up, and I'm also going to pressure cook this for 10 minutes side by side with my red salsa. Now I'm going to clean up my broken glass, uh, put salt in my pot, close the lid, bathe my baby, and come back. We're going to get some rice on because it's something that only takes a couple of minutes to get started on the stove and prepare it, and you put a lid on it, leave it alone, and you take the pot lid off when it's done cooking, and you serve it before you eat. So we can cook it ahead of time and leave it sit, so let's get some rice done. I have my Dutch oven. You can use any skillet that you want, and I put my heat at just below medium high. I absolutely hate cooking on an electric stove, but it's what we got when we bought our house, and we didn't have another choice, so there's no conversion here. Um, I love gas, but uh, if you're if you're on a gas stove, probably medium high with electric. I notice I have to go a little a uh, little less. So uh, put a generous amount of olive oil in the bottom of your pan, and you're gonna add about a half a cup of white onions, and you're just gonna let them start to um, sizzle in here until they're translucent. We are going to add two cups. Uh, white rice. I have jasmine rice. You can use any kind of white, uh, rice you want, long grain, if you want to, or jasmine, or whatever is at the store. Just a white rice. So I'm going to take a uh, half a cup of onions, oil. We're going to do two cups of rice. By the way, not only did I break the salt uh, container and shatter it all over the floor because I had both pressure cookers on the same plug outlet and tried to vacuum, I blew my outlet on this side of the house. So I'm working with limited uh, electric until somebody can get to the um, circuit breaker because I just, I can't get outside to do it. So right now I am just going to take these onions or let these onions and this rice simmer until the rice starts to get a little brown and the onions start to get translucent. I'm also going to add to this um, a tablespoon of salt, a half teaspoon of cumin, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of salt, um, a half teaspoon of cumin, and let all of this uh, fry together until the onions are translucent and the rice turns brown, and then we will add our liquid. So I'm going to let this simmer and I'll come back. I believe I misspoke on my spices, so let me just clarify. It's two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of sea salt, and one teaspoon of cumin. And you add that to two cups of white rice and a half a cup of chopped onion and let that uh, fry up a little bit in the oil until the onions are translucent. So I'm gonna finish that and I'll be right back. Okay, all those dry spices are going in now that this is starting to sizzle a little bit. And we're just going to mix those in until the onions are translucent. Then we're going to add four cups of chicken stock and eight ounces of tomato sauce. And then we're going to cover this and I'm sorry, we're going to let it come to a boil and then we will cover it and let it cook for 20 minutes and remove it from heat. Um, so I will come back once it's ready for liquid. The rice is ready for liquid, and this is what a bad day for me looks like. So I've already dropped the, my uh, salt container, and now I just broke my awesome measuring cup, and I have broken glass all the way over there. So I have to use bottled water because of what I just did with the broken glass. Anyway, so I'm going to add four cups of water. Actually, you're going to do four cups of chicken stock. I'm using the concentrate, so I'm going to add my scoops of the chicken stock in, but you want four cups of water added to this rice. You want one eight ounce can of tomato sauce to go in there and you're gonna put the lid on it and you're gonna let it, well, you're gonna let it come to a boil. Put the lid on it, turn it down to low, let it cook for 20 minutes. 
and move it from the heat, leave the, the lid on and don't touch it for at least 30 minutes and you can serve it. Um, so we'll come back to it. I have added four cups of chicken stock, eight ounces of tomato sauce to my rice, onions, and seasoning mixture. And I'm going to bring that to a boil. Once that comes to a boil, we're gonna cover that up and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Then turn it off from the heat, remove it from heat, and wait at least 30 or minutes or more to serve it. This is very much like taqueria Mexican rice. Welcome back to the Kitchen of Chaos. That's what it feels like. Um, I'm a mess today. So I'm gonna show you what I have going. I'm gonna start uh, getting the salsas out of the pressure cooker and pureeing those up and setting them to the side so that I can use the pressure cooker for my pork and for my pinto beans. So I'm gonna show you where we're at. I'm going to be using this to puree my salsa. If you don't have exactly this, you can use a blender, you can use a food processor, you can use an emulsion blender, you can use anything that will puree a bunch of stewed vegetables. So whatever it is you have that you like to use. I have a half of a white onion, a half of a bunch of cilantro set aside for my green and the same set aside for my red salsa. And then each one is still in the pressure cooker. So also what I've done is I've set up my sink to where I have a colander with a bowl underneath to catch the juice from the salsa. What I'm gonna end up doing is using the combined leftover juices from my red salsa and my green salsa, and that's what we're gonna cook the pinto beans in, and it's amazing. So that way we don't waste broth and you get all the good flavors from those vegetables and all the spices. So I'm going to depressurize my pressure cookers and I'll start with the red. I'll be right back. Okay, here's my red salsa and my pressure cooker's been depressurized so that can be uh, taken out. I'm going to set the lid over here out of the way. I'm going to also bear with the music. Amelia's rocking out and it's keeping her happy so I'm letting her do it. Um, this is my salsa verde, my tomatillos, that are all bubbly in together. So I'm going to drain those off next. I'm just going to set the lid back on that. This is super hot, so I need both hands to do it. So I'm going to dump this into that colander, uh, saving the juice into the bowl in the sink that I showed you. And then I'm going to take this tomato mixture and put it into my blender. I'll be right back. Here's my tomatoes, onions, and peppers. You can see everything's been cooked out and I've caught the juice underneath. I'm just gonna leave that juice sitting in the bowl and I'm gonna carry this over and dump this into the food processor or the blender. Okay, I've got the tomatoes, onions, and jalapenos that I just cooked in the pressure cooker in my Ninja. And I am gonna grab a little bit of that juice out of the sink just to help when I go to blend it up. I may need some just to bring it. This is gonna be a restaurant style salsa texture. So first, I'm gonna take that cilantro that I set aside, which is a half of a bunch. It's a half bunch of uh, cilantro, and then it's a half of a white onion, and I just cut it up into big chunks because it's gonna go in the blender anyway. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this hot broth. Now, I cook. I always cook my vegetables in chicken broth when I make salsa and it really does make a huge difference in the flavor. It doesn't taste like poultry, you can't taste the chicken, but it does make a difference. This is going to be loud, but I just want you to see. I'm going to start on low. There's probably plenty because everything is stewed up. It's still very hot, but you can see the texture is very much like a restaurant style salsa. Now, I just do a base seasoning that I started with, which was that tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of garlic, a little bit of cumin, and some chili powder. And I start there uh, because I'm, I'm gonna finish seasoning it after I'm able to blend it. So I just add a little bit of that liquid. I wanted it a little bit thinner. And also, I'm gonna half a lime. Lime I consider seasoning at the end. I don't cook my lime into my salsa. So I'm going to cut a lime in half so that I can squeeze it into this. And I'm going to get out some chips so I can taste it. Usually it just needs a little bit of salt, um, salt or lime to make the difference. But we'll find out in just a second. Okay, I cut my lime. So what we're going to do is I'm going to squeeze a half a lime into this and hit the blender one more time. 
I still have not tasted it and I also have not added any salt. I might need two hands, one second. You get to stare at a bag of pinto beans and I apologize. All I'm doing is squeezing that half a lime right into the top of that. I'm a freak for ninja appliances if you haven't noticed, but that doesn't mean you have to be. Everybody has their thing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spoon a little bit of this out and taste it and just see. It's really hot. I think my nephew's up because the dogs are barking. It's really hot, so you want it to sit in the refrigerator. That's why I tried to do my salsa earlier so that it can sit and cool, but I wanna taste it. I set some chips over here and see if it needs any seasoning. Sometimes I get it perfect. Mm. Okay, it's really good, but it does need salt. Usually always needs salt. Especially because I use fresh tomatoes from my garden and they tend to be a little sweeter. The lime is plenty. Occasionally I will add fresh jalapeno. I'm going to add about a half of a tablespoon of salt just to start and see how this goes. Sometimes I'll add a jalapeno, but this is about a medium heat with just the one that I cooked in there. Uh, medium heat by like store bought, bought salsa standard. So if I wanted it hotter, I would add more, but I want to be able to eat and enjoy it. Um, so I'm going to leave it somewhat mild. So Amelia's playing over here. It's loud. Bear with me while I blend this salt. enough you can see this probably see the steam still coming off of it it's really good hot and you can actually use this on um, different hot dishes if you want but this is really just a more of a restaurant style salsa for chips mm. okay that is the bomb.com that's restaurant style salsa I'm gonna get a bowl I'm gonna put it in the bowl put it in the refrigerator with a lid on it and let it sit and so it'll get nice and cold it will be better tomorrow and the next day. And you can usually eat this for up to about seven days. I'm going to show you what it looks like here. Okay, there you go. There's your fresh restaurant salsa. If after it sits in the refrigerator, you taste it and you think it needs a little more lime or a little more salt, that's common. Sometimes your heat will fizzle out and you might want to chop up some fresh jalapeno and add it back but less is more to start unless you're feeding a crowd that likes hot food. So here is a uh, medium, uh, medium heat red salsa, and I'm gonna make a really hot green salsa next. My rice timer just went off, so I'm gonna take the lid off so you can see what it looks like. So right now, it's still got a little bit more liquid than it should have, and you want it nice and dry, so um, that's okay. I'm gonna turn this burner off and just let this sit, and just make sure you don't touch it for at least 30 to 45 minutes, and um, let it get nice and sticky. So the Mexican rice is finished. We have red salsa finished and in the refrigerator. I have green salsa almost finished, and we're getting ready to put our meat and our, our uh, carnitas and pinto beans in. Pinto beans. I make pinto beans different than most people because I don't care about soaking them or prepping them or doing any of the things the bag says because I've tried it 400 ways. And to me, they still come out just like beans. So if you're a person who feels like you need to soak your beans or prep your beans or whatever the fuck you want to do your beans, do it. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't make a difference. I grew up on pinto beans, cornbread, and fried potatoes my whole life. And pinto beans are pinto beans. Uh, depending on how you flavor them, they'll taste different, but I just, whatever, it's just my opinion. Do what you want with your beans, but I don't do anything except pour them from the bag into my pot. This is the leftover juice from my salsa roja. It's going into a pressure cooker. I'm going to add a pound of pinto beans to this, but I'm not going to start it yet because I'm also going to add the leftover juice from that salsa verde. I'll be right back. This is uh, tomatillos, onion, that white onion, and one serrano pepper that I cooked in the spices and chicken stock. Here is the leftover chicken stock. In my last video uh, clip, I said that I poured the juice into the original pan that I made the red in. On a technicality, I actually moved it because I want the larger pan for carnitas. So I'm using both of my uh, pressure cookers. 
uh, if you if you can do all of this in stock pots and crock pots as well I just do it for the uh, speed so I'm gonna take this green and I'm gonna move it over to the blender just like I did with uh, the red and follow the same steps you know for everybody who thinks that I always have my shit together this is proof that I do not I'm a hot mess <clears throat> I make a mess I get frustrated I throw shit I break shit and I'm having that kind of a day and I feel like I can't get myself organized. So now I'm just making messes on top of messes and pouring things all over the place. Rant over. All right, I got my tomatillos and my onions. I didn't want to waste any of that. Let me clean up my poor blender here. Okay, so I have tomatillos, tomatoes, ones, I'm sorry, tomatillos, onions, and one serrano in there. I am going to add um, my fresh onion. I'm actually not going to add the whole thing because I think there was a little less of the tomatillos than tomato by the time that cooked down and the onions will overpower if I put too much fresh. I'm going to put all this cilantro in. I'm also going to squeeze a half a lime. I have the other half from the one earlier. Well, actually, I don't use as much lime in this. Maybe a quarter. Just squeeze a little bit of lime juice in there. Oops just to give it some flavor. Shit, I just poured that all down the front of myself. It's a good thing I'm off my floor every day in the morning so that I can dump shit all over the floor and all over my feet. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with this. So you can see there's the fresh cilantro, the fresh white onion, and all of the vegetables that you just cooked in your pressure cooker or on the stove. You can actually do this on your stove in about 30 minutes. So don't be intimidated by the pressure cooker. I just do it for convenience. This may or may not need some of that green juice, and if it does, I'm gonna add a little bit, but I also wanna taste and see if it needs any salt. I try to make my green a little hotter because green is David's favorite, and he likes to lick the sun, so I'll probably add another Serrano to this, but, after, but I'm not gonna taste it after that. So I need to taste it and make sure the flavor is right, then I'll add atomic heat. Mmm, I don't need salt. And it needs about a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm sorry, a half a tablespoon of salt. Probably shouldn't smoke weed and cook. Um, yeah. Half tablespoon, now that's the best, when the best cooking happens, but a half tablespoon of salt. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that juice back just to puree it up and make it a little thinner. And this is gonna go in the refrigerator. I'm gonna grab some juice, I'll be right back. All right, I have a little bit of that juice that I cooked those tomatillos in. And I've added a little bit of that salt and oops. Okay, I'm gonna taste this just for seasoning one more time. Make sure that it's got enough. Mmm. Okay. It's so good, but I'm about ready to destroy it with heat. So for me anyway. Here's a whole serrano pepper. I've already washed it. I just pulled the stem off of it. I'm going to drop that in there. You know what? It still needs a teensy weensy of salt. Tomatillos have kind of a sour flavor and the husk, uh, when you pull it off, they're slimy. So you want to make sure you wash them really good and that you cook them well because they are sour. So this is going to be a hot heat restaurant style green salsa and hopefully I can pour this without making a complete disaster of a mess and that fit perfect. So there is fresh salsa verde. I'm going to put that in the refrigerator to chill. For the record, I started this at two o'clock, it's four o'clock. We've made a red salsa, a green salsa, the Mexican rice is already done. We're getting ready to put the beans on, which will only take about 45 minutes, and the carnitas are gonna take us about an hour. So 
We will be able to have this dinner ready in the next hour to an hour and a half. God willing. I grew up eating my uh, pinto beans over fresh cornbread and fried potatoes and it was prepared with ham hocks or pork or some kind of a pork fat. And I still love them like that and a lot of times I will make them um, but I made them more Mexican style this time and I like to recycle the broth that I make my salsas in. So we're gonna do a Mexican style pinto bean that you can use um, and serve tonight and then you can turn it into refried beans um, and use it in future dishes as well. So I'm gonna start off by showing my pressure cooker. I have the broth that's left from that uh, red salsa that I made and I'm gonna take the broth from the green salsa and I'm only gonna use about half of that. It's a little more overpowering but I do need to make sure I have a lot of juice because the beans will absorb lots and lots of juice. And um, so I'm just gonna season the heck out of this. Now remember, I use chicken broth to do both my salsas. Otherwise, I would, if I was starting from scratch and didn't make salsa, I always make my beans with a chicken stock. So I'm using a chicken stock and it's already flavored with onions, jalapenos, serranos, tomatoes, and tomatillos. I wish you could smell it. I just added about a tablespoon of salt. I'm just gonna take a pinch of cumin to that and add just about a teaspoon of chili powder. This one's from my grandma Pat. She put chili powder in everything. She grew up in Texas in a girl's home and did a lot of bulk cooking. So I learned how to cook from her taking base ingredients and making a mass amount to feed a lot of people for really cheap. It wasn't always the healthiest way, but it's still good food. I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne to this for a bite. And then garlic powder and black pepper. For me, black pepper is the key to good pinto beans. So I like lots of black pepper. In fact, I'm not even gonna mess with the shaker. I'm just gonna pour. And I'm probably gonna put at least a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. That's all up to you. But I'm gonna douse it with black pepper. And this is where I talked about the pinto beans. Some people go through soaking and all kinds of stuff. Like I said, I just find that they cook if you cook them. So anyway, here's a two pound bag of pinto beans. I'm gonna take about half of that and pour it in save the other half. So that's it. I'm going to throw that in the pressure cooker. I'm going to add some chunks of white onion and some sliced jalapeno. We're going to put the lid on it and we're going to cook these for about an hour. So I will be right back with the onions and jalapeno to get these beans going. I have a half of a jalapeno just sliced up into coins and just about like a half a cup of white onions. There was already onions and jalapenos and vegetables cooked in. If I was starting pinto beans from scratch and didn't have that base broth, I would add much more in the way of flavor to add for vegetables, flavor, and heat. But in this case, we don't need it because we recycled that salsa, which is why I usually do it. And it turns out so fucking good. Okay, um, I'm just going to mix this in. So you've got raw beans in the bottom, your onions and jalapenos in, on top, all of that red salsa juice, half of the green salsa juice. It's in the pressure cooker. I'm gonna put the lid on it and I'm gonna set this for 55 minutes. I don't have any space left on my counter, so I need to clean things up a little bit here. And then we are gonna sear the meat and get it in the big pressure cooker so that uh, we can have carnitas, beans, rice, red and green salsa ready, and then we will make some homemade corn tortillas if the stars align. So let's see, I'm gonna turn this off, turn it back on, and we're gonna pressure cook for 55 minutes. No, you know what, I'm gonna do an hour. I have the time, so I'm just gonna set it. I wanna make sure these beans get really, really cooked. They come out um, really flavorful. Okay, so one hour, and oh, always make sure that you have your pressure uh, steam closed. I'm sorry, your pressure release closed and start. I'm going to clean my kitchen a little bit. I'm going to take care of this baby pulling on my pants and I will be back to make carnitas. Time to start the carnitas. 
So I've been doing some cleaning. Those beans have about 39 minutes left on them. I'm gonna sear these carnitas in my cast iron. If you wanna use the sear uh, feature on your pressure cooker, you can. But with my carnitas, I like to get a really crispy brown sear on them before I cook them because to me it makes a big difference in the flavor. And I think that's why people love my carnitas so much. They go through a lot of steps before I serve them. The rice, when I showed you earlier, was still a little soupy. All I did was turn the burner off and let it sit. So it's much more like a taqueria rice. You can see all the liquid's been absorbed. So this is still hot. I'm just gonna leave this here and push it back. I'm gonna prep one of my big cast iron skillets with some hot vegetable oil so that I can uh, get the carnitas seared and get them in the pressure cooker so I can, um, they'll take about an hour to cook. We're gonna start the carnitas and I have about eight pounds of raw pork carnitas already cut up. Uh, you can use as, as much or as little as you want. The seasonings and the measurements I'm giving you will season this amount of meat. Uh, four pounds is usually a good amount to feed a family with leftovers. I'm making this amount so that I can freeze it for the future. So this pork, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to uh, make sure that it's uh, coated with salt and I'm going to get it into this hot frying pan. And I'm also going to start searing some pieces here in my uh, pressure cooker so that I can get it going faster. There's just a little bit of remnant from my salsa earlier and that's fine. So first I'm going to take a little bit uh, I want to make sure the pork is really good and coated with salt before I put it in the pan or in the oil. So I usually just, as I pull pieces out, I salt below and uh, or I salt as I go down further and I put the salt side down. And um, so I'm going to get these in the frying pan and you want to make sure that your oil is nice and hot before you add them. Dancing in other words, in other words so go salt. Oops, these are slippery. Salt side down. It's nice and hot for searing. So all the pieces I'm grabbing out of here, I've already made sure that I have salt on one side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this pan as full as I can possibly get it without overcrowding it. And I want all of these pieces to get a brown crispy outer edge. And then I'm also going to layer the bottom of the pressure cooker and do the same thing and continue to brown all of this meat before I added all of the pressure cooker with some liquid and seasoning. So I'm going to add these to the pans and I'll be right back. I've got carnitas searing in hot oil over medium high heat on the stove and then I also have some searing in my pot and that's just for the sake of getting all the meat brown before I put everything in the pot with some liquid. I still have some left here but that'll go in in just a second and I'll show you what it looks like when it's brown. In the meantime I put together the other uh, ingredients that are going to go in this pot. So I have a mixture of spices and what you're going to need for this amount of meat, again I'm doing eight pounds, so you, you're going to have to uh, measure accordingly. But I have um, eight pounds of pork shoulder, a quarter cup and two tablespoons of kosher salt, two onions uh, chopped up which I will chop and add, uh, two cloves of garlic which I already have chopped and set aside here and then I'm going to squeeze a whole fresh lime into the juice, two tablespoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of dried oregano and a teaspoon of ground cumin. So here's my dry, here's my garlic and then I'm going to add the lime and the chicken broth to top off the meat. So I'm going to keep working on frying this and once the meat's brown enough I'll show you what it looks like. I'll be right back. I've got that first layer of carnitas seared. You can see it's nice and brown. The other side is browning on the bottom. And then my frying pan also has some pieces that are quite uh, close to done. The middle is always gonna get more brown on my stove. So as these brown, I'm gonna move them over into that pot and make more room for some more of the meat that still needs to cook and move some more to the middle. Um, it's probably gonna take me about another 15 or 20 minutes to fry all of this up, but I'm just gonna keep frying and adding to this pan here. And once we get the meat in there, we'll top it off with some juice and our spices. If you ever wondered how many pounds of pork you can fit in the big Ninja Foodie, it's about eight and a half pounds. I would not go more than this. So I've got most of my pork seared up. I'm gonna drop two white onions in, chopped. 
I'm gonna put all of that dry rub that I just measured out for you in the clip before, just drop it in there. I'm gonna drop my garlic in there. I'm gonna squeeze a lime in there, and then I'm gonna fill it to the top with liquid and close the lid, I'll be right back. This lime is resistant to juice, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drop the whole thing in there just so that it cooks and gets all that flavor out and I'll just pull the rind when I'm done. Good God. One handed is not always good. Okay, I'm gonna do one more lime, I'll be right back. Okay, I just added liquid to this and it looks like it does need a little bit more water. So while I'm getting water, I'm gonna go ahead and add some water to this and then just to where it barely covers the meat, I'm gonna put it on for probably an hour and 10 minutes. I think that should cook it just fine. Just make sure that you cover the top of your mixture and don't go over the fill line. I'm really pushing it to that max line. So I've fit about as much as I'm gonna fit in this pan. I'm gonna set it to pressure cook for me for about an hour and 10 minutes. We will come back to it and my beans only have about five minutes left on them. The rice is done. And I have both my red and my green salsa chilling in the refrigerator. Okay, the beans are finished and they're just sitting here on the warm setting. And I've already tasted them. They're really, really flavorful. They've got a little bit of spice to them. David said they're spicy, but he wouldn't taste them on video. He just got home from work. Anyway, so here are the pinto beans. I'm just going to leave them sitting in this pot on the keep warm setting so that all I have to do is pop it open. The carnitas have about 40 more minutes of cooking. And then I'm going to pull that shredded meat out and just crisp it up in the frying pan and put it on a fresh tortilla. And I've got myself set up to make some fresh corn tortillas. So first, um, this is a contraption that somebody bought me to be very thoughtful to make corn tortillas and it's absolute garbage for anything other than pressing tortillas. I would never ever use this. I've tried to use it to grill and make tortillas a few times and it's awful. So I use the press feature and I actually press, my, I press them here and then I grill my tortillas on the stove top in my cast iron. So I have two cups of instant corn masa. You can buy that at your grocery store. And I've got two cups of water. I start out with about one and a half cups and mix it in with a wooden spoon. And I mix it until the um, consistency is right so that I can roll it into a ball. So I'm going to add some of this water in and mix it and I'll come right back. Okay, so here's my corn masa. I'm gonna put all but about a half a cup in. There are uh, directions on the actual package, but I put my dry goods in these individual little pantry containers and I lost the directions. I have made these so many times that I can really just look at the consistency and tell, but you sh if you follow the directions on the package, they should help you. Um, I notice in, as the uh, humidity rises, sometimes I need more or less water. So basically, you're just going to mix this up until you feel like it's a sticky consistency that you can roll into a ball of dough. And I'm going to keep doing that, and I'll come right back. I'm going to cut the camera. I've added almost all of that water, and I just want to make sure that there's nothing crumbly or dry in here. It still needs a little bit more. I haven't used quite the whole two cups, probably a cup and three quarters. I did wash my hands, so don't freak out, but I'm getting ready to stick my hands in here and I'm gonna roll this into a ball of dough so that it forms together. You're just gonna kinda knead it. You don't want it to, if it's sticking to your, it should come off your hands and roll off nicely. If it's too sticky, it's probably too, uh, too wet. You want it dry enough that you're gonna be able to form this into individual dough balls. And I'm going to use my cookie dough scooper just because it makes it easier to make consistent tortillas. So I have this ball of dough right here. Amelia's helping. 
I'm just gonna form this and set it back down in the bowl. I'm gonna get a uh, my cookie baller and cut it into individual scoops and then press it in my press. I'll be right back. I have a um, cookie scoop. It's a three tablespoon cookie scoop. You can use um, anything about this size. An ice cream scoop would probably be about this, maybe a little too big. The only reason I'm using it is for consistency. So I'm just gonna press the dough into it just like I would if I was making cookies and scoop it out. And then I'm gonna put it on a piece of wax paper and set it on my tortilla press. And smash this down. And I have a corn tortilla ready to fry on the grill. So I'm gonna do multiple of these and stack them up with a piece of wax paper in between. And once I get my tortillas all pressed, I will come back and we'll put them in the frying pan together and grill them for tacos. Okay, tortilla time. The carnitas have about eight minutes left and I finished the corn tortillas. So I have a stack of fresh corn tortillas in between wax paper and I have my cast iron piece on there. Um, my cast iron skillet is on medium heat, so I'm just going to drop these in. I don't want to put too many in because sometimes you need a little bit of room in the skillet to move these around until they, they get cooked. So I'm just going to put one here. Be careful peeling these. If you got the right consistency, you sh they shouldn't crack, you shouldn't have any trouble with them. But just leave them sit and they'll start to dry out to where they're easy to move in the pan. I have them overlapping right here and I'll fix that, but just leave them alone, kind of like pancakes. Don't touch them. I need to grab a knife. And I'm just gonna chop up some cilantro, onion, lime and jalapeno to go on these tacos. And I'm gonna quarter them. Let me grab a plate. Thank you. take a second and look at these tortillas. They're starting to steam a little bit, so it looks like they're dry enough on the bottom that I can move them. If you try and move corn tortillas too fast, they will stick and they'll fall apart. Um, this still isn't done, but it, it, it's going to give me some room. This one is still, um, you, I don't know if you can see the color up close and if not, but if you have any difference in color, it's, the lighter color is still not cooked enough. This will not move. See how it's still sticking? I'm going to leave that one alone and just keep working on cutting the cilantro and onions. If you don't have cast iron, you can use any skillet you want, any non-stick skillet. Just make sure that it's at uh, medium-high heat and you let the tortilla sit and get nice and grilled before you move it. So this jalapeno is a monster, so I'm going to hack it. Amelia is helping. to touch these because for some reason I seem to have a reaction to them when I touch the seeds with my hands and they bother me for a couple hours so I kind of wimp out and just touch the outside and then I'm just going to run my knife through this to make them smaller for tacos so don't judge me because I'm not much of a jalapeno cutter I usually use my chopper for this to save my hands from burning I have to go back to my tortillas okay this one I'm going to turn See how it's got nice brown marks on it? So that side is done. This one should be done enough. Even if this side tears a little bit, they don't have to be perfect, they're tortillas. And that one too has a little bit of brown. You want the grill marks and you want it to be nice and dry. So I'm just gonna leave that there to cook on even heat and then I'll rotate to the next. So I'm coming back. We're gonna take a quick break. You got her? David's baby wrangling and he's helping film so I can use both hands. I 
I don't even want to touch these. We went to the Hollywood Farmer's Market and bought jalapenos one time, and I chopped them all up, and I touched them with my bare hands, and I had a horrible reaction, and ever since then, I'm, I eat them. I like them, but I'm afraid to touch them with my hands. I don't know why I have trouble with them. So. I probably should wear gloves, but I don't have time for that. So I'm just going to move these over to my plate. I'm only going to cut half that jalapeno. Chances are David's the only one who's going to put it on his tacos anyway, and he can chop more if he wants it. There's some jalapenos. Okay. I'm going to check on my tortillas. They're almost done. They've got little brown spots. You can kind of see the little cracks. You want to make sure that they're cooked all the way because otherwise they'll be doughy in the middle. So don't be afraid to let them get grilled. You just don't want them to get dry. So this one definitely needs more time. It's doughy on the outside. The electric skillet, I'm sorry, the electric stove really gives me a hard time with even heat throughout the skillet. So this one looks done to me. It's nice and dry and it's cracked. It's got some browning. So I'm going to pull it out. I have a tortilla warmer, but it's lost in my pantry. So we're gonna use towel and a paper plate and it works great. So I'm gonna flip this over to cook the other side of this better. And then even heat in the center of this pan and then we'll put two more tortillas in. All right, my second tortilla is done and it looks nice and brown. I'm gonna go ahead and stack these on top of each other. The steam and the heat will keep them nice and moist and warm. Just keep them wrapped in a towel and just keep rotating tortillas. You wanna make sure your pan's nice and hot, but not so hot that they're gonna burn before they actually cook. They do have to cook, they're raw. So I've got one there, one here. And I have my jalapenos and my limes cut. So next I need to do some onions and cilantro. Oh, I didn't mean to put that at the side of the pan, but I'll just let it heat up and then I'll move it later. Try and get them as much in the pan as you can. I have a bigger pan and probably should have used that. All right, so I'm just gonna chop this onion up. I like to use white onion for the top of my tacos, especially these types of tacos. These are more street taco style, traditional, um, but you can use any onions you have. in each direction. About halfway through, and then I'm gonna do that going the other way. And then turn the onion on its side. And little thin slices through, you'll have nice chopped onions that you can just cut through your cilantro into. Or if you don't like cilantro or you've got somebody who likes their onions separate, you can just keep them separate. It's just an easy way to get really evenly cut onions, especially for garnish. And this is a giant onion, so I don't think we're going to use all of it. So I'm just going to do half the half that I went through with the knife. Set it aside. In fact, because I'm using a small cutting board, I think I'm going to leave the cilantro separate. I'll just cut it up separate. But I'm going to move this over. I'm going to check on the tortillas first. Okay. So that one's done on that side. It's nice and brown. This one's sticking. That's just because of the way I put it in the pan. And they get it moved a little bit. Once they start or drying up, you can move them. I can probably even fit another one in to start cooking it. Oops. All right. An imperfect taco is still a delicious taco. All right, here we go. And I'll move that when I can. So I'm gonna take these onions and put them on the plate next to the jalapenos and chop up some cilantro. And do you want cheese on your taco? No, thank are you, you going to do cheese on your taco? No. I don't think I am because these are street taco. 
So I don't think we're going to do cheese, but if you wanted to do cheese, you could do uh, cojita cheese, you could do Monterey Jack cheese, you could do cheddar cheese, any cheese that you want. Um, I'm going to chop up this cilantro and finish grilling up tortillas, and when I open up this pork and get ready to fry it, I will come back. Ah, they're sticking. They're fucking sticking. Okay. I'm gonna flip that over. That one's not done, but that's okay. I just wanted to get them all apart. So that one needs to cook a little bit. These all need a little bit on the other side. Actually, this one might be done. No, that one's got a raw spot on it. I can see it. Oh. This needs a little bit of time. Okay, so I've got my cilantro almost all chopped up. I'm just gonna finish. I just cut most of it right off the bunch and I've just been running my knife through it. And instead of mixing the onions with it, I'm just going to set it on the plate next to the onions and we can mix it ourselves. And then I can use it later in something. I might actually put a little bit in the sauce. Okay, so we have lime, onion, jalapeno, cilantro to top the tacos with. And then I have green and red salsa that I'll pull out of the fridge here in just a minute. And fresh corn tortillas. And it looks like the carnitas are done, so I just need to uh, release the pressure and we'll crisp them. So I'll be right back for that. I'm going to release the steam on these, or release the pressure on my carnitas. And once I'm able to do my cabinet, I should have moved that forward. Once I'm able to do that, I'll open it up and this meat will shred apart. And we will put it in the uh, frying pan and so that it serves up nice and crispy and put it on these fresh tortillas. So once the steam is released, I'll be right back. Carnitas are ready. I'm going to open the, I already depressurized it, so I'm going to open the pot and I'm going to show you how to crisp them and build tacos on the fresh corn tortillas. Um, so my rice is done, my beans are done, and the salsas are laid out and we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is this pan is set at medium high. It's the same pan that I used for my corn tortillas, um, just so I don't have to dirty another pan. So I want to make sure that I have a decent amount of oil because I really like my carnitas crispy. There's nothing that grosses me out more than getting a, a carnitas taco with slimy pork on it. It's just gross. This pan's almost too hot. So this is what it looks like when it first comes out, and it should just shred apart. And since I have so much here, I'm not going to crisp it all up right now. I'll probably end up freezing some, but see how it just crisps, crisps apart. I'm going to take chunks like this, and I'm just going to set it in the pan to get it nice and crispy. And my salsa is going to be ready. Okay, and this is moving. So. Remember I chopped up all those onions in there, and you see them. By the time I crisp up the carnitas and use a wooden spoon to break this up, those onions are going to completely dissolve right into the meat. And that's why I didn't care about being specific about the way they were cut, as long as they were small enough to break up and dissolve into the flavor. These carnitas you can use for tacos, you can use for burritos, you can do on a salad. Um, I'm going to serve them traditional with some tortillas tonight because this is my absolute favorite taco. I'll take this over anything, anytime. And if you've ever been to my house and I made you carnitas, you know how amazing these are. So I can't come cook for you, but I can teach you how to cook it for yourself. I need to grab a wooden spoon. For the second, I'm just going to kind of break this up. You can see how tender that meat is. And remember earlier I mentioned that I wanted to uh, make sure that it was nice and seared. And you can see that the pork was already brown so that you're not going to have a slimy pork. There's some fat in here. Fat is flavor. Just break it up into the carnitas. I'll break up a little bit more. I'm sure everybody will have a few tacos tonight. This will be leftovers for lunch tomorrow. And nachos is always a favorite in the house. I keep ordering tortillas at the grocery store and they keep sending me the wrong ones. So I'm just going to cut them up and make them into chips. I'm, if I buy tortillas, I'm a snob about the ones I eat. So. Okay. I'm going to 
gonna do one more little hunk of meat here and just let this fry up to where it's nice and crispy pieces. And then you can watch me build the taco. So I'm just gonna mix this in and once it's mixed in, I'm gonna leave it sit for just a second. And then I'm gonna have the cameraman follow me down the counter so you can see everything that we made today. Now, I started at two o'clock and it's 7.30, but in fairness, I broke two big glass pieces and had to clean that up in between. I gave the baby a bath. I also gave her a bottle in between there, and um, there was a lot that happened in between those hours. So if you were doing this nonstop, you could probably do it in about three hours. If you don't want to do that, you can make your salsas the day before, save your broth, and then make your rice and your beans and your meat the next day. If you don't have pressure cookers, you can do this on the stove and it's usually about a four hour process to the amount, it's four to five hour process to the amount I did the, in the pressure cooker. Um, and then if you have a slow cooker, you can probably do it in about six hours. So you can use something beside the pressure cooker. I just use it for um, efficiency because I can get a lot more done when I use them. So I'm gonna leave these carnitas sit I just want them to start getting a little crispy like that so they'll be crunchy on the tacos. And the rice is done, so I'm gonna get a spoon. We left the rice to sit earlier. It had a little bit of liquid on top, but now it's, um, it's absorbed nicely, so it's kind of a sticky texture. So this, if you can see in the pan, a lot of people serve Spanish rice and call it Mexican rice, and it makes me crazy because it's different. And I like Spanish rice, but it has green chilies in it and big chunks of tomato, and it's not the same type of rice that you get when you're going for a, a taqueria experience. So this is actual Mexican rice, taqueria style. We made that today, and that was an easy recipe. Here's your garnish. Here's the red and the green salsa. Um, they were taste tested and approved. We did some corn tortillas from scratch. Well, as scratch as they're going to get for me, you need um, some instant corn masa and water and a tortilla press or a lot of patience with a rolling pin, and I don't have that. And then last but not least are the pinto beans that we cooked in the leftover juices that we cooked all that salsa in, and it has fresh jalapenos. So we'll eat this tonight, charro bean style, but you can break this up or mash it up later and make refried beans. Um, we may serve it later over cornbread with fried potatoes, like I mentioned, because that's comfort food for me. So um, I'm going to check back on these carnitas, and as soon as they're crispy and they look right, I will come back so that you can see them and you can watch me build the taco. Happy Taco Tuesday. Time to build tacos, and it's time to eat. All right, carnitas. So I have three of the corn tortillas that we made. Move this out of the way, and this is the carnitas. They're nice and crispy. There's little crunchy pieces in here. And so I'm just going to lay them a little bit of meat on each tortilla. Don't be chintzy with the tacos. All right. Okay. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the onions. Are you okay with a little bit of lime on here? Um, George, just from a historical perspective, I'm going to break my rule. I'll just wash my hands. Jalapeno. You know, I think what history looks at the current president, what history looks at the current president, has all the prices that And just squeeze it on each one. Set it there in case he wants more. So he's a green sauce guy. So I'm gonna do two tacos with green sauce and one taco with the red. And then we have chips, and then I will serve up some beans and rice. Or all three green. Uh, and I drown that out in sauce. So make it a little pretty on top. There we go. Give it a little cilantro and onion. Okay, we have tacos. And then, this is the pinto beans. 
I'm going to use a slotted spoon just to get more beans. There'll be juice in there, but otherwise they'll be really soupy. But here's some pinto beans. Your rice. Some chips from the deli. All right. So there's. Oh, I didn't put red sauce on, but that's okay. Carnitas, rice, beans. Happy Taco Tuesday.